What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back at it with my very own Demon 170. Of course, that Destroyer Gray, that drag car from the factory. But before we get into what the heck is going on here, let's have a little bit of a chit chat. So a lot of things happening on the interwebs in discussion about the Demon 170. People complaining about the top speed, people complaining about the performance, and even people blowing up engines. So what I want to do is I want to do another deep dive. We've already talked about the car. We talked about how I bought the car and why I bought the car. And if you haven't seen those deep dive reviews, I'll leave it at the end of this one so you could follow up with those. But on this particular deep dive, I really want to focus on are all the things that you're hearing on the internet true? Isn't that normally the case? Everything we hear on the internet is true, right? Wrong. Obviously, there's lots of platforms for people to be sharing misinformation or things maybe they're just confused about. So what I want to do is, is I want to go for a little spin in my Demon 170 and I want to talk about some of these things that I've seen on the internet and are some of them true and are some of them false? Let's go ahead, let's go in for a deep dive and figure it out. guys we are inside my 2023 it's the only year that they ever made it Dodge Challenger Demon 170 and what I wanted to kind of talk about on this drive is a lot of the chatter that I've been hearing online like I said at the beginning of this video there's just a lot of chatter going on and I think one of the biggest things that I used to tell my students or teach my students besides the actual history lesson because remember I was a history high school history teacher for 18 years and psychology as well but uh, one thing I always used to try to instill with them is don't take things at face value question things research come up with your own idea your own thought about it and the reason why I bring this up is because like I said of all of the chatter online about the demon 170 and just some of the things that I've been hearing so let's start with the first thing that I that I picked up on on the interwebs I guess there's a lot of people that are upset and uh, even a class action lawsuit against Dodge because the Demon 170 does not have a top speed of 200 miles an hour. Let's talk about that for a second. This car is all about the quarter mile. That's 1,320 feet. We're not talking about half mile races. We're not talking about flying mile races. We're talking about eighth mile and quarter mile. This car is not geared to do more than 169 miles an hour. It's just not. The gearing maxes out. That's where you're at. And then on top of it, you got to remember that these are Mickey Thompson drag radials that are Y rated, which doesn't allow them to exceed 170 miles an hour. So I don't know where everybody was that's upset was getting this inclination. I guess it had something to do with that video that dodged that teaser with the leprechaun or whatever and it showed like some crazy top speed. I don't know. But just because a car has a lot of horsepower, which remember, on E85, this car has 1,025 horsepower. Just because it has a lot of horsepower doesn't mean that you're going to have a crazy top speed. Gearing is so important. So important for each application of vehicle and what its intended purpose is that that is going to limit you 
in different things. For example, one of my dad's friends growing up had a 69 Camaro RSSS 396. This thing was built to the hilt, had like 550, 600 horsepower, which by today's standards is like a drop in the bucket, right? But it was running 411 Posi gears out back, 411 gearing. When he had that car in fourth gear, I remember going down the highway with him and it was pegged like at 5,000 RPM and we were barely doing 65 miles an hour. Because with 411 gears or 410 gears, it's about that quicker acceleration at slower speeds. So gearing has so much to do with it. Let me put it to you this way. When I used to race cars professionally, depending on the track we were at, which and if you didn't know, I used to race Formula cars on road courses. Formula Ford, Formula Mazda, so on and so forth. Depending on the road course, we would change the gearing. If a road course had a lot of long straightaway, you wouldn't want the gearing for a road course that didn't. So obviously for the quarter mile or eighth mile drag strip setup, they had to run certain gearing in this car, which is gonna limit the top speed. And then the tires are limited. I remember back in 1989, when Goodyear came out with the Z-rated tire, that allowed car speeds to go above 180 miles an hour. And that's why I always say tires are so important for what you're trying to do with your car. So that's number one, which I wanna go on throttle real quick. On throttle, here we go. This thing makes me freaking just get all giggly. It is a beast, a beast of a car. And I love her. I love her for everything she is and everything she isn't. But let's go to number two. The second thing that I've heard floating around the interwebs. I heard somewhere that people were saying that they knew of, of a Demon 170 that had engine issues, a blown engine. They dropped the oil pan and they noticed that one of the rod bearings, the crankshaft bearings, where the rod attaches to the crankshaft, one of the journals of the crankshaft was missing. So a lot of people, of course, are like, oh my God, Dodge, what are you doing? The quality control, blah, 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 blah. If you were to assemble an engine with one or more of those bearings missing, the engine would grenade itself very quickly. I don't even think it would make it to vehicle delivery without at least some major engine noises going on, some rod knock, something going on. So I don't even think that that's true. I, I really think that somebody either didn't know what the hell they were talking about or just decided to make some crap up. So that's, that's number two. Number three, people that take their Demon 170 to the drag strip are blowing engines. I could see that happening, and I'm sure it has. And that's one of the things is that with this last one, I'm not here to say that nobody isn't having issues. The cars are built, mass production, every car has its issues. It, it just happens. It's just, I don't think it's as widespread or this thing that all Demon 170s are just gonna blow up. I don't think that that's the case one bit. So let's talk about this. People taking their Demon 170s to the track and blowing them up. 
back when I used to drag race cars when I was in high school and I also did some some street racing, which I'm not proud of, but I did it. Different time than today. Don't do it today. Don't street race today. But, you know, back then, we used to drag race, we used to street race. My Corvette, after my dad and I got done building it, which I did blow the motor in it, by the way, spun a bearing. It was putting out 550 horsepower and about 500 pound-feet of torque. Like I said, by today's standards, that seems like normal, but especially back then, especially the Corvette, the L98 in a C4 Corvette, an 86 C4 Corvette, put out 235 horsepower. I would go to the drag strip, I would run my passes, say it's six passes, seven passes, however many passes, I ran for the day, I would change the oil. As soon as I got home, I would drain the oil, change the oil, and just let it be known, I would change the oil before I went to the track. So I would have fresh oil going into the drag strip and fresh oil after I got home and drained it. These cars have, like I said, 1,025 horsepower. They are serious power plants, lots of heat, lots of stress. You're taking a vehicle that weighs 4,200 pounds plus some, she's not a light girl, and you're moving it from a dead stop. I mean, with this car on a prep drag strip, you're able to pull the wheels off the ground. Do you know what kind of freaking stress you're putting on the drivetrain, especially the engine? You gotta change the fluids. You know, I remember growing up in my dad's mechanic shop, the oil is the blood of the vehicle, is the blood of that engine. You don't change it, you're gonna have issues. And I really think that if you look at professional drag racers, they're doing so many things after each run to make sure that they keep that wear to a minimum. Now, I'm not saying that you got to disassemble the damn thing after every time you go to the drag strip, but these are things that you need to do, especially if you're going for the first time and you're on your brake, your engine braking fluid. That has a totally different viscosity. That has certain additives that have been put into it for the break-in. And that, after you're done breaking it in, needs to be taken out immediately. That's how important that is. So if you're saying to yourself, man, those Demons in the 170s, they, they, they're going to blow up. No, they're, they're not gonna blow up like you think. You can make any engine blow up if you do the wrong things to it. You gotta just be understanding of what this car is capable of and what do those capabilities do to the drivetrain, the engine, the transmission, the rear diff, all those different things. So if you're thinking about a Demon 170 or you're thinking about you know, going online and, and reading into all of this information, just be careful with what you're reading. Question it, see the source, and, and get a bunch of different perspectives. Because I'll be honest with you. If I would have listened to every single thing about cars that I have read online, I wouldn't own my Shelby GT350. People blow voodoo motors. I wouldn't own a Subaru WRX STI. People blow motors in that. It's like, I guess I would just ride a bicycle. It would be Rady's bicycles instead of Rady's rides. So people tend to go online to complain, to talk about bad news, because guess what? Bad news gets people looking. Good news, nobody's gonna go home. I'm not gonna go home today and post, you know what? 
I drove my Demon 170 today. I went on throttle. Da 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 da. It was a great day. Nobody, I'm not doing that. I also don't go online when things go bad either. That's just me. That's just I grew up in in a in a time where you don't you don't blab your 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 information just constantly all over the place. But um, these are things that you gotta question, you gotta look at, and you gotta say to yourself what is real and what isn't, and then come up with a good plan by looking at that different information but it's just one of those things like I said I just felt like I had to talk about some of these issues and debunk them for you and obviously what better place to do it than in my Demon 170 it really like I said it really is a car that uh, separates themsel itself from really anything else out on the road and it's not just the horsepower just the fact that you could put E85, you could put pump gas, and it's gonna measure that out for you. But before I let you go, I just wanna go on throttle one more time. Are you ready? On throttle, here we go. Golly. <laughs> it's crazy that even at 80 miles an hour, it wants to break loose. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy roll from 80 miles an hour and getting on it and you're breaking loose. I remember back when I was a kid, man, when we were drag racing, we would have given our left arm to, uh, cause you got to shift with your right arm. It was all manuals back then. But, uh, we would have, we would have given all that, our left arm up just to have 50 more horsepower than what we had. And now from the factory with a warranty, 1,025 horsepower. But I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are, of course. And uh, let me know if you have any other vlogs, whether it's about my Demon 170 or anything else that you have on your mind. Let me know in the comment section. But we're going to get back to where it all started for this one and wrap it up. I'll see you in a nanosecond. All right, guys. Always a good day when we can be behind the wheel of my very own Demon 170. Great to talk about some of these hot topics that are going on on the internet, sharing you some of my insight, sh some of the actual information that I know when it, it comes in regards to engines and top speed and what the purpose of the car is and all those other things. But if there's certain topics that you want me to dive deeper into with the Demon 170, let me know and we'll be putting those together so that you could go for another ride with me and answer all your questions. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raise Rise family. Of course, we need to give it up to the hardest working camera person in all of YouTube, Lori Gibbons Rady, working that camera like a champ. Show us some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.